God save the queen! Hey you guys, it's William calling from Wooby Blogs, joined with Chris in London, Denise in the Netherlands, and Porrick in Ireland. And we have a breaking news flash. The BBC has just announced that it will reveal its Eurovision 2015 singer on March 7th. They're going to do so on the red button following The Voice. You guys, instant reactions. What can we glean from this? It's good and bad. Um, it's been promoted from some random time in the middle of the week to primetime Saturday, but then the fact that it's on the red button, it's not really showcasing it. Like, could they not just move the lotto back half an hour or an hour and be like, this is our song, we've it on our main channel, but no, you have to go press the red button. Um, so good and bad. Mm. I mean, the Molly reveal thing was only about 10 minutes long anyway, so surely they could, like, find 10 minutes cut out of the voice or cut out of something else and do, like, a short lotto or something and just put it in there. I do wonder if the fact that it's um, it was from an open submission, but the fact that it comes directly after the voice, could it mean it's somebody relating to the voice in the past, whether it's a former winner, former act? Obviously, we've had lots of rumours like that Tyler James, um, Vance Joy, those kind of names have always floated around for Eurovision recently for the UK. So it could be one of them. Um, but I'm happy, and they will probably promote it on the vote. So they'll probably say at the end, oh, make sure to hit the red button to watch the Eurovision reveal. But fingers crossed. And I'm I know this is a fantasy, but Denise, do you think it could be Jesse J or Rita Ora? <laughs> Um, I don't think so. I think it will be a great artist. Uh, they will uh, announce it in a different way. So I think it's an unknown person. But they can announce it any worse than friends did. So <laughs> It's interesting. Yeah. In their announcement, they say that they reached out to amateur artists and professional artists. Um, and last year, they actually specified the winner or their chosen artist was an amateur. But they don't specify that this year. Does mm. that hint to you guys that this is another unknown or that it's a celebrity? I don't know, they could be just playing us for fools, like, you don't know what, what they're at. Um, like, if it was a big, huge celebrity, would they relegate it to the red button? If they got someone major, it's going to be like, if they were, it, it's going to be drawing the ratings and they'd put it on the primetime channel, but when it's an unknown, I'm guessing, they'd put it on the red button, so I'm not hopeful for a big megastar. Hmm. I mean, there is the fact as well that you think, oh, professional writer... Pete Waterman was a professional writer, and he gave us That Sounds Good to Me. He was the only person that sounded good to, I think. <laughs> so, um, I'm not, I'm not like thrilled at the idea that it might be a professional, because I think the Molly formula was probably the best one that they could have followed again. So yeah. I agree, actually. The BBC introduction introducing, I think it's a great platform for artists, because Molly, even if you didn't like her staging in the end, I think it was one of the better entries the UK has sent. It was Britpop, it was Now, it, was, it had a distinct identity as being British, um, and I really respect that. But, you know, yeah, see, the problem then with choosing an amateur like Molly was then that when it came to the big stage, kind of the nerves got to her, whereas if it's someone professional, they'd be able to, they'd have their team who'd be able to say to the BBC, no, we don't want to dress our act up in a dead lion. We want them to look normal. And they'd have the stage practice and they'd come off a bit better, even if they might have it, like they'd be able to pull it off better than money. Now, I'm a fan of The Lion King, but you're right. The BBC, I don't know what they were thinking. If you get a professional artist, they're going to have that team behind them who they've worked with for years, who know what they look good in, who know how they can perform, who know what settings they respond to. So yeah, that would be a huge benefit. Now, the BBC announcement also says that one song stood out as having both instant impact and dot, dot, dot. So clearly, they believe they have the best of the lot. How that will compare to the songs at Eurovision, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I want to say, um, you said that uh, some artists have a team behind them for many, many years. But Engelbert and Bonnie, they had a team behind them for a million years, oh, yeah. and they were bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, it doesn't say a thing. I think Molly did better. The station was a little better. And she didn't have a team behind her, so maybe an unknown person can be better in this case. Let me qualify my statement. <laughs> I meant relevant artist, not okay. like ancient or deceased artists who have been reanimated for your okay. vision. <laughs> okay. okay, one other point. Y'all, have you seen the graphic that was released with this news? This was like done at home on the cheap, y'all. Now, I find it hard to believe that the BBC does not have a professional graphic designer to sort them out. Well, yeah. Let's just hope they've spent all their money on their act and that they're bankrupt and that's why they have to do this little crappy graphic. 
the little the little thing that says the UK reveal just in the in the bottom corner. Like they're almost ashamed of the fact that we're revealing the act. <laughs> Don't let them build your bridge. It will collapse. This is cheap. <laughs> yeah. There are no legs to stand on. But I never tried doing it. But I think my first attempt will be way, way better than their... I don't know how many times I did it. But I think I could do it way better <laughs> than them. <laughs> Agreed. Individuals shine. Bureaucracies do not.